Hey folks, welcome back. This is Lucid, and I'm here with Sakening. Hey everybody. And we're jumping back into casting, uh, new casting. It's turn 22. A oh, very busy turn, looks like. Yes, compared to some of the other turns. So uh, where should we start, Sack? Uh, well, we've been, uh, you know, Lemuria seems to be the, the main event right. so far. So let's see what's happening here. And it looked like last episode he was getting a little bit of breathing room. But uh, apparently that was only a temporary respite. Right. We see here a uh, ba- bunch of game herdings and javelinists move on top of this fort. So Jotunheim, uh, sorry, Utgard here. I guess we could look at Utgard because he, right. I mean, he wants in on this war and he's trying to claim as much as he can, but Raga has kind of blocked him off. Right. But uh, this fort still has value. We thought Marino might go for it, but, you know, okay, it has one income. It's not a lot of value, but <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. it doesn't have any value. Fine. It doesn't have much value. It has uh, some. <laughs> it's not zero. Yeah. It's and it's pretty awkward cuz Marion can just it's kind of the the sort of thing you're not going to want to put a lab or upgrade it cuz really Marion can take it from you whenever you want or whenever he wants. Yeah. I mean maybe run. he'll get lucky with some sites there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, it's probably the kind of thing you search and if you find it you might upgrade but So if we just look at Utgard here, okay. he's pretty narrow. Yeah, he's uh, very long. He's got this He's had this barb province near his cap from an event for a while yeah uh but you know he's kind of stretched northwest and southeast so i think he needs to start thinking about how he's going to uh roundify his empire a bit yeah there's not much more to be gained down they, here you know they can get pretty fast moving thugs with the scrotty so yeah. that can limit some of the problems with being an awkward shape um, but yeah, I, I think they need to think about it too. What would you do if you were guard? Well, normally in a straight up matchup, I don't really like, especially at this phase in the game, going up against mass crossbows, uh, yeah. whether it's Marignan or Alm. Now, that being said, Marignan is, see, it's awkward because I was going to say Marignan is involved in a war with Abyssia. But that happens to put his big army right on the doorstep of Utgard anyways. Yeah. So that's not a great target. Alm, it might not be clear what Alm is doing. Like, I don't, Alm is not particularly committed anywhere. Now, I don't know. Utgard may or may not know that. Yeah, he may or may not know that. But, um, you know, chewing through a ton of wolves with giants is never fantastic. I think there's a very small window where it's a good matchup versus Ulm in, in a game for Utgard. And that's when you have Scrotty that are online, but he doesn't have Solsley. Cause, yes. And that's a pretty small yeah. window. Um, so as Utgard here, would you be prioritizing going for Scrotty Thugs or going for Turbo Communions as like the next phase, right? The, the early phase is I've got regen giants. What are you going to do about it? And then... As that falls off, you kind of transition to something else. So what would you be thinking? Uh, I mean, Turbo Communions are going to be your best bet against Ulm. Um, They're pretty good against a lot of things. Yeah. I mean... Also, it's easier to get, right? All you need is Storm 1 and Enchantment 5. Well, you need Blood and... Yeah, Blood 1 and then Enchantment 5 and Storm 1. Yeah, that seems... I mean, ideally, likely. you're... Yeah, actually, that'll cover you mostly. Yeah. But Enchant 5 isn't... I mean, they should be getting that pretty soon. But the thing with uh, with going for Turbo Communions isn't really the research cost. It's like the mage cost to your armies. Because now in order to have like a war, you really... Like Scrotty are going to be... I can't remember if they're slow to recruit for Utgard. I feel like they are. Yeah, pretty sure they are. Um, yeah. So, you know, and he didn't have a ton of forts. So it's you're going to need at least two Scrotty. Uh, and then you're going to need, I don't know, you'll probably want like four minimum Seth Conan, probably eight. Yeah. Um, so it's a, it's a very mage heavy commitment if you go that way. Whereas if you go like Scrotty Thugs, you know, you can, it's more like gym dependent than it is mage dependent. Um, All right. 
But Utgard, so, yeah, so they've taken, they've popped this fort, and I... I assume they'll take it next turn. Um, yeah. Lemuria could kill this if he concentrated, probably, but... Oh, well, let's oh, look at like this battle. Yeah, so Raga... This looks like a very minimal... Okay, it's just a... It's a pretty... I mean, minimal with 20 Zaydens is always... Deserves an asterisk, but... Is it 20? It looks more like 12 or something. Like All right, fine. 12, yeah. Eight. Still. Oh, and then they jump in back here, right amongst the consoles and the Grand Lemurs. And they do not have magic weapons. They're going to be getting all diseased up, too. Yoink. So I think Raga here, if you recall from the map, is kind of like split up in three provinces, trying to fight Lanier in three provinces. Yeah. And that might be a little greedy. Uh, given that he doesn't have magic weapons, right? So yeah. any medium-sized Lemurian army is, is going to do well against these. Uh... Yeah, that, I mean that's kind of textbook how to kill is they just. I mean, when, if they get surrounded, they will fall. Depending on the bless you have. Yeah. And then these guys being ethereal obviously helps too. So he lost mostly dispossessed spirits. It looks like he lost a lot, but he didn't really lose much. This did not really weaken the Lemurian force at all. And meanwhile, he lost seven Zidaeans, two war elephants. War elephants are not good against Lemuria either. And then, um, okay, he only lost five because two of them got converted. Yeah. So not a. It's not like an epic win, but I would say this is a win for Lemuria. Yeah. Uh, and then he has another big force down here, which cleared out some Atlantis chaff. But Atlantis moved his biggest army here. Of all the armies around Lemuria, this is the hardest right now for Lemuria to fight. Yeah. Although if if Raga combined his army where he had the yeah. uh, the art, that's like ninety Arya infantry with magic weapons. Yeah, he would. Lemuria would need. Lemuria could, if he combined these, Lemuria could kill it. But he would mm, need yeah, everything. Um, probably, I would say like three hundred fifty ghosts is the minimum. And then probably some console support, but I would anything less than that, and he's gonna get kind of wrecked. And a lot of playing Lemuria is knowing that, like knowing how many you need to bring. Because if you bring 200, it's not like, oh, you almost win. Like if you bring 200, you get absolutely shattered. But if you bring 350, yeah. you eke out a win. Um, okay. And then this, this, this is why I was saying this is the hardest. This you're going to need. Okay, wait, these have ice spears. Okay, there's only... Okay, yeah. So it's 110 guys with magic weapons and then two of these. This you're going to need... I'd say 500 almost to kill this. So this is really hard for Lemuria to kill early. And I don't think he has 500. Here he's got... Because you don't count the dispossessed spirits. Here he's only got like 120. Here he's got 120 or something. 110. And he's got maybe another 100 here. So I don't even think he has an army big enough to take this. And then this is the problem having like 100 wall strength forward is this is popped now. So it's like they're forcing yeah, him into a very desperate position where it's like, oh, I have to defend this, but I don't have what I need to defend it, you know? Yeah. Like he's in an awkward position because that uh, the victory he had over that fort in Raga, now those troops are isolated. Right, right. So he kind of has to either go oh, yeah. for the Atlantis fort or go for that uh, the Zaydan province. Like that's the only place he can move that army, right? And it, fight with his other troops. I think it's a good point because it it also shows why you don't want a fort here. Like yeah. this fort is hard to defend because ideally, when and when you're playing Lemuria, you need to plan on getting attacked like this. 
you need to be able to move from one fort to another and knock people off. So, like, this one, like, if this was here, it would be so much better. If this fort was here. You know, he could, like, move exactly. off of this and defend other things. And then, yeah, all these being wall strength 100. This is also greedy, by the way, because you get, if you want to maximize ghost spawn, you don't upgrade these at all, right? Because it's going to cost money, but not give you more ghosts or not many more ghosts. Um, but then when this happens, you get forced into these desperate positions. Okay. Um, I think we've covered all the Lemuria stuff, right? Gath is still... He's just oh, patrolling okay. there. I guess he's getting scouts, right? Yeah. Okay, so we've done Utgard, we've done Lemuria. Uh, for Gath, that tells me that he has diploed Elm. Yeah. Because if he hadn't, like that army just stayed there and patrolled. So if he right. hadn't, he'd be moving on to the uh, to the Elmish front. Yeah. And in fact, it looks like he's reinforcing from the south. Yeah, it looks uh, like he's almost getting ready to go back in and take another bite, which is, I don't know, yeah, what do you feel about that? Because I feel like there isn't much more value to be gained here. Yeah, I think, I mean, it, would I take these forts for free? Sure. But, like, I would sit here with an if I were Gath and I wanted these, like, first of all, he has a super exposed flank, right? So I... I would never put all my troops up here just so I could get these two things, maybe. It just doesn't... I don't even trust people enough to do that. <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> like, Raga is so close to my capital, he could just come over here, and, like... If Raga sits on top of Gath's capital, it's over. You know, like, because... Potentially, Raga can keep reinforcing, and then Gath can move his army back. Well, ac except that I actually off. think... Like, Raga's... De uh... Um, Gath's death ball now is scary enough that Raga can't necessarily just count on winning that. Yeah, but I don't know. So one thing actually to remember here is that because of the the strange map gen, um, Gath actually doesn't have a wasteland in right. his cap or anywhere. And that is a huge kick in the balls. Um, so where is the closest wasteland? This is one of them. Uh, to the left of, of Lemuria. I don't think... Uh, it's kind of hard to tell in the winter. Yeah. But... Um, I think it was that one near Lemuria. Here's one here, too. But he'd have to conquer Ulm and Utgard to get to that. That's not practical. Ulm doesn't really have any. Because honestly, as Gath... Um, Especially with a heavy bless like this, you really need a wasteland. That is your priority. So maybe that in and of itself is a justification to go after Lemuria. Yeah, I think that's a good to point. Get that province. I haven't thought about that. Yeah, I don't see any other wasteland around here. So, okay, maybe he's doing that. That makes sense. I mean, I don't know if he's doing that, but I like I don't know if that's his reason for staying involved in the fight. Yeah. But in, you know, with uh, hindsight, it does But uh, it does make sense. But this is kind of the thing. If he if if Raga were to come up here and raid Gath, like get on top of his cap and then keep jumping off and hitting different provinces around it, very quickly Raga could have all of this and Gath is all in on one doom stack. And it may be that if he catches the Raga stack, like he would win the fight, but I mean, you're kind of a dead. You're you're kind of out of the game at that point, though. If you're Gath, I think. Like, there's yeah. no other fort to build infrastructure and raid from. All the raids are going to come from the cap. If you're feeling me, like for him to get his land yeah. back. And so Gath is, uh, fortunately, Gath can you know with his cap uh, mages can split up his doom stack into you know a bunch of guys because they're holy three right so and they're giants right so with like an armor piece or something yeah. and proper positioning he can kind of safely counter raid against you know small zayden raids yeah. with his giants and small blobs uh but 
Well, let's uh, let's compare for a second Gath and, and Raga. Like, look at the fort positioning on Raga. Raga has all these forts spread out. He's got troops recruiting in all of them. He's got cap-only sacreds, which are up here, which can reinforce this fort if he were to get attacked. Yeah. You know, this fort is a so, short short move from his capital, and he's got troop production going on everywhere. So he's not yeah. all in on this, right? And meanwhile, Gath's exactly. like 100% Over, Exactly. All in. Overall, Raga is in a much... Yeah. If he were to go to war with Gath, he would win in the long term, I think. Well, yeah. Just, like, he raids... Gath might be able to, to clear out the raiders, but overall, like over time, Raga is still getting stronger, whereas Gath right. would just be, you know, standing still, treading water. But this is an important part of diplomacy, too, because Raga is projecting power around his flank, whereas Gath is projecting weakness, right? Gath is all yeah. in, and so he's, like, I was, like, obsessed with why Ulm didn't attack him, right? And now I'm, like, obsessed a little bit with why Raga is not going to attack him. Mm -hmm. Pretty soon I'm going to be obsessed with why Atlantis isn't going to attack him. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So anyway. Uh, maybe we talk about Atlantis now. So anything else? So he's pushing west into Lemuria. Right. He's built a fort on that underwater throne. Clever. More forts coming up in the lake to his east. There's a land yeah. fort... So he's, he's getting forts up. I think Atlantis needs a lot of forts. I think they're like a very fort-heavy nation. Because they don't... You kind of need forts to recruit your units, and then you need different forts to recruit your mages. And you don't... You're not taking double advantage of it, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, fortunately for him, he's got enough... He's got yeah. a lot of land. Yeah, and a lot of breeding to build forts, so... Yeah. So he's looking good. Yeah, and he really is facing no other pressure. Right. Uh, so he can kind of hunker down if he wants and, and get all his infrastructure and, up. And all his neighbors are in a war except for Jomen. So Jomen is the only real wild that's not wild true, because Jomen oh. this turn has attacked Satis. Oh, yeah, let's look at this. Okay, so he comes and he kills the Saruman, so let's see what the Saruman's is casting. <laughs> Must have just been sight or something. Or skeletons, okay. yeah. Jomen with the, the naked merman just charging forth. He's got the the, uh, the shark warriors, which are pretty good. They've got pretty good base natural protection, and then they have pretty good armor. So, you know, yeah, they end up getting 7 protection. protection head and then 20 protection body. And then they have two high damage attacks. So, And a great parry. Yeah. And you, you do want to mix them with, uh, with other troops because they're size 4, ideally. But yeah, they're not great. Like they're not gonna super carry you, but they're super solid. Well, I think they seem fantastic for raiding. Yeah. Because uh, no PD is gonna even get past the parry on that. Uh, yeah, they do have pretty high attack, don't they? Especially if they get a few stars like a on their belt. But... Length five. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty nasty. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's skeletons, so if you have a mage there doing skeleton spam, that they don't really care. Right. But still. So he's attacked there, and he's also attacked uh, there. Wait, here was the other one. Okay, and so here he's got the Go Hatamos. And uh, just a little bit of PD. And so now Satis is in a pickle, which I guess we're going to come look at now, because Satis has taken this fort. So Abyssia attacks Satis. Oh, with a Z. Oh, this is a pretty... This is going to be a good battle. battle. All Production right. Popcorn. A Z with the fireflies. Right. Got to get that fatigue nice and high before he, uh, he engages. Now, the thing about... I'm actually wondering now if he's on, like, cast, cast, or if he actually selected fire from fireflies in the script. Casual well, by 42 now... fatigue. Yeah, I don't know. So notice the two the chariots have like evaporated. Yeah. Can you do, can you do a quick F one? I want to see how many uh, Abyssian troops have been killed. There's a fair number. Maybe ten, twelve. Yeah, probably twelve. All right, and what about the chariots? Twenty-five. Yeah. Twenty. So I mean, chariots I, are actually I, okay against light infantry. Yeah, the problem is this is heavy infantry. 
And I mean, they're even okay against heavy infantry. The problem is... They got out there all alone. Yeah, yeah, you don't... You want them... Flankers in general, you almost always want to hit on a flank. I mean, flankers. Tramplers in general, you almost... Look at that red. So... Amazing. Yeah, except again, the position there is not great. Um, I feel like, I mean, so Satis has just an overwhelming number of troops here. Yeah. Uh, and, but I think he took, so I think that number of tomb chariots is certainly the correct number to start bringing them out and fighting with them. Yeah. But as all too often happens, so you know that there were some banishers and they just like deleted the tomb chariots, yeah. so many of them, before they hit. Um, so you want to try to script them somehow where they stay in the back, hold an attack, and get some other skeleton chaff in front that yeah. will eat the first few banishes. Well, um, Tiss also gets... Um, they get protection, like a one of the undead protection spells. So yeah, you can cast it Holy 3 and it's Imar Negates, but you can cast it Holy 2... And I think it's area of effect ten, which is if you're really trying to get the chariots, is probably your best bet. Yeah, you can um, buff them a little bit with that too. Yeah. So having like two casters do that, and then having these guys on hold and attack towards the back, and then you have your main army run up. And like best case for these chariots is they run back here past the army, they kill the mages, and then they slam into the exactly. back of the army. I I kind of feel like the chariots. See, they're very fragile until you get enough of a mage core where you can buff them enough that they're like... I mean, they'll never be strong. They only have seven hit points. But they can be not so glass cannony. They're the very good for killing mages, though. Because yeah. like, see, bodyguards like, don't protect mages from these guys. These guys are just going right. to just run and dissolve them. So I just feel like you it's a resource that you want to try to accumulate and not waste. Yeah. And they, I mean, they did a good job in this battle winning that fight, but... But just look at the positioning. His, he spent he's them. thinking of these, like, fodder. Like, I don't care if they die, they'll free spawn. He's not really thinking of them like a resource. I think you want to accumulate these. Yeah. I think you put... I like the idea of having two flanks. So, like, having one of these boxes out here and one over here. Let's see what he did. Maybe these guys were on holding attack. These guys are holding attack. Yeah, but they're in the back in the middle. Yeah, you want them on the back on the side. Let's see if they're back here. This guy... Somebody did power of the grave? Okay. These guys get all jammed up behind your troop, their troops. They're on hold on attack forces. Guys in the back. Now these guys actually do do a get probably a fair amount of kills. Like, how many is this guy? Seven kills already. Eleven. Well, those are the only two survivors from the right. front line. Well, no, these were. I mean, these were round two. I think, but yeah. Mm. Oh, I think all the front line died. So if we look at the, the report here, um, Abyssia lost 73 and his god. Rip, poor Z. And then the Tomb Chariots all died but two. Uh, but he lost some chaff, the city guard, which he doesn't care about, and he lost 20 desert rangers, which he does care about. And then the fort had 30 dudes inside of it, which really could have been useful in that fight on the outside. I guess he didn't have a commander inside to, to pull them out. Uh, is there any chance those were guys who retreated? Or no. did he lose all the troops? Yeah, it doesn't. if you retreat outside the fort, you don't go fight in the battle inside the fort. It's kind of weird because if there's no battle inside the fort, you'll retreat inside the fort. But if there's a battle inside the fort, you won't participate in it. So. Um, so if this were just a war be on one front between Satis and Abyssia, that went pretty well. 
you yeah. know, he he lost some of the rating he was doing in the north, but he's doing fine. The problem is now Satis is also dealing with Droman. Now, Droman yeah. was very cautious in his opening move, but... I think Satis's best bet here is to, hopefully Droman... Hopefully Joman hasn't communicated with Abyssia. In which case, he might be able to even sell this fort back to Abyssia. Or just say, hey, I'll peace out with this, if you're cool with that. But maybe selling it back to Abyssia is a better thing. Because he needs to get out of this war with Abyssia now that Joman's attacked. Except maybe he's in touch with Marignon. And he Marignon now has decided, like, yeah, I'm going for Abyssia all in. And he feels that he doesn't really need to. Because Abyssia risky, lost though. his god and lost a lot, right? So yeah. the issue is, what is Abyssia going to do with that army to the northwest? I think this yeah. this amount of troops is an existential threat for, uh, for Satis. Yeah, so the question diplomatically is, can he risk just abandoning he to, that he fort? He has to pull this army out. So then, right. do you want to pull this Abyssia... army with or without a nap, I guess is the question. Yeah, exactly. Because are you afraid that Abyssia is going to take it back, or does Abyssia? Because Abyssia is facing an existential threat from Marignan, yeah. if Marignan chooses to actually move in his direction. Right. So there's a lot of diplomacy we don't know. Uh, what's in that big German army in his fort? Uh, cavalry, uh, mostly these guys, the Gohamados, which are pretty solid. Yeah. Now, so this uh, has, you know, doesn't have, you know, he has something back home. Yeah, yeah, he's not, he's not undefended by any means, but I think if you're Satis, you try to catch raiding, and I think you assume this army's going to attack here and this army's going to attack here, and then you defend both of these, because he could probably Agreed. defend both of these against this, yep. but he can't. Like, if either of these positions get reinforced from here, he won't be able to defend against that. Yeah. But. I agree. Defend rating. Yeah. But I think the Poison Slingers here are going to be super clutch. And then also, if he gets these chariots flanking, they could do pretty good against these guys. And assassins, too. Like, Droman doesn't yeah. have, you know, their commanders are going to die to assassins here. Yeah. Okay, so that's okay. Uh, Satis and Abyssia. Okay, they take this back from Satis. And. Uh, what, you know, this was the heavy cav. Oh, oh so Satis like is not talking to. Yeah. So Abyssia tried to take this with not enough dudes last time. Right. So he weakened it. Marignan walks over with a huge army. But right. Satis, who had a little raiding force, decided, well, I'll try. Yeah. Um, and so they're not communicating yeah, that <laughs> tightly. <laughs> but if they were here, which I think is where they were, they probably should have attacked here, I guess. Because that, I agree. Then they could at least start tracing income, because right now they can't trace income from here. Mm -hmm. So even if they got this, first of all, yeah, I think you're right. It really points to how little they're talking, because like, why would you even want this as Satis when you know this is going to be Marignan's pathway into attacking Abyssia? Yeah. Yeah. So Marignan, they get this. They're building up more armies. Is this just a... Yeah, it's a scout. Yeah. yeah, they're building up some armies. They got a big army here. Marignan can go in a lot of directions. Yeah. We just don't know which one they're choosing. So Utgard we've covered, Lemuria we've covered, Ulm, Ulm is hanging tight. He got the he got the throne. He might right. be thinking about just fording up that throne and taking his time. Yeah, Ulm is uh, very slow in in making decisions and moving. So yeah, we also yeah we've talked about it, but we think he could you know either go to Gath or against Utgard. He has a lot right. of potential targets here. He did take a bit of a beating at this throne, so he's a little weakened, so I can understand kind of chilling out for a little bit, but... So, there were developments here. Uh, right, so let's check out this battle. Okay. All right, so Agartha retreated. And we have a battle here, Agartha attacking Bogarus. 
just, this is just PD. 15 PD, so he actually loses a fair amount of, this actually is a fair amount of gold he lost here, so it's like, yeah, from the yeah, sappers, 160 gold or something. Now we had, I remember last turn, last episode, we'd come up with a fantastic set of moves for Bogarus that involved uh, moving with his, so Bogarus' army moved Tele south. Cloud trap easing and then cutting off. Like Sprouts, Agartha, interesting, yeah. this is interesting. So Agartha felt bold enough to go, he attacked onto Bogarus's big army, right. where it was. So he felt confident that he would win round two. And right. we thought that Bogarus should move southwest into that province where the crossbows are now. Right. And Cloud Trapeze, the pretender, onto uh, right. the throne. Oh, by the way, what has the gear on the pretender changed? We can check. I don't think so. Yeah, it's the same thing. Nope, same thing. Um, All right. And then still, still made over here still. Yeah, still made over there. He's not feeling strong enough to move forward. Did uh, did Bogrus catch anything in that swamp? Bogrus moved south there. Some PD, but taking yeah. very light losses, so that's nice. So that's good. That's a net gold gain. Yeah. But this army, now that it's between his armies and then Agartha's infrastructure... Um, and this is scary enough to go sit on top of Agartha's camp. Yeah. So, let's see if Agartha... And there's yeah. not an obvious, like, I think Boogers, if he wants to, can pretty confidently, like, for example, go south. Because the main army can't, like, yeah, Agartha can't God. move that big army because it's so slow. Yeah. He can't move that big army to defend a lot of the places where Boogers might go. Yeah. And then he's got enough ichthids now, he can probably raid here if he if he chose to. Yeah. So, so looking, this is a very tense war. I don't think it's extremely yeah. clear at this point which way it's going to go. Agreed. Um, and then I think we've covered about everybody now. Yeah, I'm looking through uh, the messages here to see if we missed anything. Let's go to turn 23, I think. We might have missed a detail, but I don't think we missed anything important. Turn 23. Uh, we ended with the Agartha Bogarus conflict, so let's go check this out. Agartha is attacking Bogarus, uh, and Bogarus has his god out again. With a bunch of swagger. And a couple of uh, wounds, if I remember correctly. Right. Limp and never healing wound. Somebody, I think it was after this battle, in the game chat, they posted a meme of, uh, of Gandalf screaming, You shall not pass. Yeah. Which is kind of funny because this guy's keeper of the bridge and he looks old. So, you what's know, he buffed Gandalf with? did that thing on the bridge. Yeah, for I mean, sure. I think it's uh, Iron Skin and. Uh, the, I don't see Timber Flesh. Mist form. Which is probably fine. Mist form. Regen. Pink 30 protection, zero defense. Classic um, Titan. <laughs> yeah. So he's cooking. He didn't go with our double thunder. And the field is broken. Well, let's take a look. I wonder how good this double thunder whip actually would be. Because, okay, this guy's still high. This guy's still pretty high. This guy's still pretty high. I don't know if Double Thunder would put it down. It would have cleared the chaff out a lot faster, but I don't know if that's going to actually get through these traits. Let's see. Yeah, Let's look again at the end of the battle. I'm thinking maybe Thunder Whip plus... See, the thing is, honestly, he's been working on that spear in front of him for... Like, he's been working on that spear. Wait, he's been working on what? Like... There was a square in front of him oh, yeah. that was just filling with tons of dudes forever that he was just never Oh, it might have worked. Look, 22, 12, 13. Yeah. Eventually. Well, I mean, yeah, but yeah. No, eventually, I but agree. you have the whole battle. I agree. Three. Might have been enough. I mean, this, okay, so obviously this did work. This was enough. Um, oh, I only did his phenomenal. We're gonna have another limp back. Oh. Nice. What round are we on? Uh, okay. 
110, I think that's the trigger, yeah. I know this cave drake. <laughs> <laughs> you shall this, not pass. The slowest one wins. But he's not killing anything, but he's killing most of the stuff in the retreat, and the army got split up. But I think, yeah, not. I think he needs another spicy weapon here. Okay, we we talked a lot last time about what Bogros needs to tweak to get uh, to make this work. What does a Gartha need? To actually kill this guy. Oh wait, real quick. So he didn't move this army. He did a PD dump here. Uh, he thought that Agartha might try pull to uh, pull back and like defend his capital. But no, instead Agartha moves here. I guess anticipating these guys might raid. Giving up on the eastern front. Right. Which might be uh, an issue because now with the Ichthyids. And these guys. But, and these guys, he, he can defend. now oh, go on the 40 offense. PD. Holy shit. Yeah, but he doesn't know that. <laughs> right. Well, I'm just thinking, if these guys reinforce, if Agartha reinforces, Bogarus probably can't take this with 40 PD. Yeah, I agree. But Bogarus might not, he might not suspect that there's 40 PD there. Oh, yeah. But, um, so we'll see. Maybe he's baiting him to attack here and then he'll... Yeah. Okay, as Agartha... Do you feel that there's a way that you can kill this Titan? Uh, yeah, get him, get the Titan attacking you, Skelly spam, and then cut off his retreat route. So it's kind of a waste of time and resources to be headbutting yeah. against this province. You can also send, uh, like with Iron Ancestors, I was men mentioning you can make them anti-super combatants. Right. Um, you have to be pretty careful mixing them in with your archers because your archers will kill your own iron ancestors. But yeah, it, it, these guys, I mean, this guy is killable for sure uh, with an iron ancestor thug. But I don't know. I had to. That's definitely something I'll use if I ever play Late Age Garth again. Uh, Late Age Garth just doesn't have. Like, if you look at all the things you need to do to, like, deal with all the specific situations that are going to come up in a game. Like one of, especially with like thugs and super combatants. If a thug and super combatant can survive skelly spam and archers, you don't have a ton of ways to deal with them early, except maybe iron ancestor thugs, and that's like pretty gimmicky. Because especially if you use a lot of archers in your army, then you'll kill your own iron ancestors. But yeah, Agartha has like good heavy infantry, but they don't have like a very killy unit. Yeah, it's the Cave Drake, and they're super expensive, and they're not that killy. Yeah, they're not that killy, yeah. yeah. Now, I just noticed here that Atlantis has moved a bunch of... Are they recruiting those shamblers on land? Is that a shambler village? Oh, uh, no, it's these are made underwater. Yeah, so that means he moved them there from underwater. Yeah. That's not sure odd. what he's thinking, but it looks like he might have some ideas. Um... Let's come over to the Atlantis front. I mean, to the Lemuria front now. We see yeah. a battle here. So it looks like Atlantis attacks on the outside, which is not good. Okay. You remember what I said? How many did he need to kill this Atlantis army? You said 500. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That is not 500. That's not 500. 350 would be, like, very, very close. And, like, very close, like, Lemuria's probably going to lose. Doesn't even get a flank off. Not even almost enough. So, how much do you think Atlantis lost in that? Just mm, five. Four. Four. <laughs> I was close. And and this is what what's so important about playing Lemuria is like you have to know how many troops you have to bring because like I said, if you bring two hundred fifty, you get absolutely crushed. Nothing dies. But if he brings five hundred, he wins. So it's like. Do you want to trade or, 220 or for 4, lose. or do you want to trade 500 for 100? Yeah, even if you're going to lose the 500, at least he would have killed. Like, it would have been a nail-biter if he had lost it, right? Yeah. So he would have inflicted some damage. Yeah. Um, now, let's actually look just north of there. And then in the fort, he, there's nothing here. So Yeah, because that had a... Would, did, did Raga clear out a big Lemurian army? Oh, yeah, that was... no. So means, Lemuria did not combine his armies. They were he like, thought, I got this. Yeah, hold my beer. 
Yeah. And he had these guys here. I, these guys were really good because they have fear. Oh, man. Didn't, I didn't see these before, so... These would have been so here. good. These actually could have turned the Atlantis fight. Like, these were not there last time in the fight. So he moved them from somewhere. Well, he could have moved them to the Atlantis fight, which we should have done. He could have moved this whole thing to the Atlantis fight. And they could have okay. been events this turn, because this fight happens before the event phase. Yeah, and here we see Raga has reinforced with his magic weapon dudes. Right. This is a, a Raga Doomstack. Yeah. And so back here, the important thing to look at is the uh, Grand Lemur and the Console, who are not in the same tile. Ideally, you want them in the same tile. Yeah, you could fit all three of these guys in the same time, which, in this case, you would want to do. But really, you would want them to keep you from losing a fort in, uh, in the year. I mean, with Atlantis. So he just gets routed. He just got HP. But that doesn't affect the mortars. So the thing to look at here is these, uh, these mortars. He could have won this, too. If he had put these guys in the same tile, he would have won. It's like small little details like that. Lose them all. Um, yeah. And that's a zinger. And then here, did he fight? Oh man, he's just, he's, he's gonna fight everybody at the same time. In some ways, Zach, my thing watching this is I'm thinking like, holy shit, he's actually doing pretty good despite how bad he's doing. I, and I don't well, mean that in strong. Way, but I mean like... Yeah, like there's... I, I think if anything, this goes to show how... Like, this is a very strong nation, right? Yeah. There are, there are three, even four... Like, he's doing a 1v4. He's making a lot of mistakes. Now, his opponents are making some mistakes too, but I right. think... I think Lemire is making more mistakes than his opponents. Oh yeah, and he's getting I, whomped, but he's but he's getting, getting whomped, whomped way slower than he should be. Well, yeah, like that's the thing, right? Like as you said, it's decisive. You either lose everything or you win. Yeah, but each of those battles, he's coming really close. Now that not that battle, <laughs> right? But um, mostly just because even though they don't have magic weapons, like giants have whatever, 30 hit points, and ghosts are just so bad, they just hit, they're just so weak that it yeah. just takes them forever to even kill a single giant. Um, but yeah, like, guys, Lemuria is nasty. Uh, you got to, you know, as these players are taking on Lemuria, yes, they're succeeding because there's four of them, but you got to be thinking, you know, how many casualties, how much gold or whatever gems or resources have I lost taking out Lemuria? Yeah. And you got to try to minimize that, right? And so sometimes that means you got to be uh, less greedy. You got to be aware that Lemuria's main play is going to be, in this situation, is going to be a Doomstack. So right. you got to be expecting a Lemurian Doomstack wherever you go. And I think Atlantis has been the most successful so far. Yeah. He's taking the fewest casualties. Now it's a great well, matchup. Well, he's also the best but, matchup. Yeah. Yeah, but he's also Atlantis he, could have one v one Lemuria, I think. Like, in gen, in general, yeah. Atlantis can one v one Lemuria. Yeah, but in this game, Lemur, uh, there was never a situation where, well, there could have been close battles if there had been an epic one v one fight. Yeah. But but Atlantis was always ready for that and expecting that, whereas. Raga has taken many more casualties, and early on, lately, yeah. Udgard hasn't fought him a lot, but early on, Udgard also took a lot of casualties. Well, Atlantis so, is doomstacked as, as much as... I mean, he's got a lot of troops in yeah. places, but... Which I, but I think that's correct, right? That's what I'm saying. Like, that's a, at this, well, at this it, phase of the war against the Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, exactly. At this phase, this is what you need to be doing. But uh, what, what's interesting me, is when I said, like, Lemuria was dead five turns ago... Mm -hmm. I I think 
like if I were to jump in and take control of the nation then, I think I could have gotten them to survive. They wouldn't have thrived, but I think I could have caused enough attrition to everybody to just let them be a, let me be a small Lemuria. Yeah, I think you could have gotten... Well, we were thinking that... Maybe the, not Atlantis. The Atlantis was, even. Yeah. Yeah, Atlantis even. I think you could have gotten Raga to peace out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The thing is, a small Lemuria actually isn't that dangerous. Like a Lemuria with six forts and that's it. Yeah, you just got to take care of them before he's, they he's put up burn of time or something yeah. stupid like that. Yeah. He's basically irrelevant. If you can finish them off, it's good, which is, it looks like what they're going to be able to do now. But anyway. So Gath is still patrolling there. Oh. Uh, not going for that wasteland. Literally nothing has happened here. Look at all Gath. these ghoul guardians. I think this gives us insight into what Ulm is thinking. You think Ulm is planning to go after Gath? Yeah. Well, look, given how he's moved his troops, yeah, it looks like he wants to raid. Yeah. But he is kind of, yeah. I mean, there's literally not a single troop on the entire Gath border. Mm hmm. Has not organized, not even one PD. No PD. He could take both these provinces. There's not, I mean, there's literally nothing here. Literally. Okay. Guys, put PD in your provinces. Please. Uh, Ulm. Yeah, he's building up. Nothing, nothing else. Just moving troops this way. Breeding dogs and wolves. Marignan. Moving in for the kill. So it takes this from Satis, which is fine. It's not really attacking Satis. Abyssia. The fuck? Okay, so this is interesting. It looks like Bogarus got the message, Abyssia is about to die, his god's dead. He's like, okay, I'll come in and take some of this. But there was a lot of PD. There's a fair amount of PD, and he's... And he only has indie crossbows. And he's risking a lot, because he's bringing an Eparch and two mages, and some crossbows. Oh man, feels bad. That's a man. shame. But, you know, the fate of vultures. Uh, it wasn't It wasn't just PD. There was an actual army there, too. Oh, okay. I mean, small army, but still. Yeah. That lumber construct. Yeah. I'll tell you, I'm mm. on Team Bog Bogarus. I don't know if you can tell, but, like, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. really rooting for Bogarus. But at the same time, anytime I see a vulture lose an army, never going to shed a tear. Yeah. Meanwhile, Abyssia... Oh. Feeling not too threatened by, uh... What's this? Oh, this is Satis taking fire the force. Please. No, no, no more fireflies, please. Because he, he doesn't have any fire gems, right? Yeah. Alright, strange, strange things. So this was like... I think as Abyssia, you have to expect that even if you know that he's fighting Joman and that Satis might move back, he could totally move back going through that forest. It's the same distance going to his cap. So you had to expect an army there. Yeah. So I think those mages were going to reinforce somewhere, but that is not, that is uh, too far. And then Abyssia attacks into Satis up here. We had a lot of PD, but unfortunately yeah. PD is bad. Abyssia's are good. But this move is weird because there's now a massive Marignan army right outside his cap. Right, and this is and like a pretty long way. He can't stop it from going on top of his cap, basically. And there's no god. Yeah. His only hope for defending his cap is mass fire elementals, really. Mm-hmm. Which we haven't seen a single yeah. one of yet. <laughs> yeah. YOLOing out away from your capital when you're in a dire situation like this usually is not the best way to inflict damage on your enemy. Yeah, your capital is uh, often a good place to make a last stand. Yeah. I mean, if anything else, if nothing else, you can hold up the fort walls and then, you know, he's got 50 PD. Holy shit. 
that's a lot of PD. That actually might be enough with uh, with the army he has to hold. So actually, maybe I think I might take it back. Um. So Jomen, uh, they raid here. Now let's see if Satis anticipated this. They nope. did not, or did not care. And then here, they reinforced and they reinforced, then raided. Then they waste. raided. Yeah. So Satis missed a valuable opportunity to kill these raiders because this was a pretty predictable move. Yep. And he easily could have killed this. And if he killed this and had a big doom stack built up, that would put him in a much better position to fight this army. Now, something that's going to be hard for us to detect is I suspect there are many assassins that have been deployed in his cap circle. Yeah. He also has a lot of crossbows, it appears. Which can be very good against German. So that's a good choice. It's going to be good against the Bissia, too. It's really just a, a good unit to have at this point in the game for... The neighbors, it's looking like he might fight. Is there any, um, are there any other threats facing Jomen? Like what's going on on the Atlantis border with him? That seems yeah, pretty seems chill. Reasonably chill. And I'm, I'm guessing they have a peace agreement or something. I'm not sure. But I don't see any Ryujin yet. Nothing well, happening my, over here. First one might come next turn. There are a lot of Atlantis troops over here. Atlantis... I think Atlantis is thinking about shifting after Lemuria into, into Jomen. But it's hard to tell. It would be... It's a good target. I think, like, geographically, that makes sense. Yeah. And then from there, you can pivot into Bogorus and Marignan pretty easily. Um, okay. okay, so we, we looked at Jomen. Raga. Yeah, we watched this battle. Raga's uh, definitely paying a little bit. He seemed to have moved a bunch of guys over to that throne. I'm not sure why. Okay, he uh, killed some barbs over here. Yeah, that was just an event. But like you see on the Lemurian front, oh, I don't know why he moved those guys? Like there's a bunch of, I don't know what that's about. Oh, are those just maybe retreating units from the battle? Yeah, that's probably what that that's, is. Actually, yeah, that's yeah. probably that. Okay, so we've looked at that. We've looked at Marignan. We've looked at. I think we've looked at about everybody. Yeah, I think uh, that's it for this turn, and for this episode. All right. Well, I'll see you all next time. Take care.